Hi there and welcome to another Call for Maths A Level video from Hegarty Maths. This is the ninth video on vectors, the penultimate one, and in this video we're doing the dot or scalar product. As always, for more help with your maths, check out YouTube, Twitter or Google+. As I said, it's the ninth video. This is for the LXL Core 4 syllabus, but it's applicable to most A-level modules. If we look at the scheme of work, we've done everything to do with vectors at the moment, apart from the scalar pro product, and it's used for calculating the angle between lines. And we're going to do this in two videos. Okay, launching straight into it. Here's a picture, and imagine we had a vector A and a vector B, and theta is the angle between them. It turns out that in order to work out that angle, we can use the following formula. Cos theta is equal to A, the vector A, dotted with the vector B, divided by the modulus of A times the modulus of B. Now, a couple of things need uh, fleshing out from this formula here. If we're dealing with A dot B, A with B, this is pronounced A dot B, or A scalar product B. It's a way of multiplying vectors, and I just want to show you how you would go about doing that. Suppose vector A had three components, was in three dimensions, it was A1, A2, and A3, and B, vector B, was B1, B2, and B3. A dot B is given as the X components multiplied together, A1 multiplied by B1, plus the Y components, or the J components multiplied together, A2, B2, plus the K components multiplied together, A3, B3. Okay, and that's how you'd work at A dot B. And I'd like you to note that this is a scalar. The answer to this is a scalar, i.e. it's a number. It's not a vector. Okay, so just to like clear that up, A dot B, if we had something like 1, 2, 3, and we were dotting it with 0, I don't know, minus 1 and 2, it would be 1 times 0 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 which would be, this would be 0, this would be minus 2, and this would be 6, so we get 4. We get a number out the end of it, not a vector, as it were. Okay, so that's how you work at A dot B, and you divide it by the modulus of A, the size of A, over the size of B. And just if we need reminding what the size of A is, if A is this vector here, then the modulus of A is A1 squared plus B1 squared, uh, sorry, plus a2 squared plus a3 squared, all square rooted. Okay, and similarly, the modulus of b would be b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared, all of that square rooted. Okay, so in summary, if we want to find the angle between two vectors, we use the following formula. That cos of that angle is a dot b, which is a new thing we learn at the scalar product, divided by the size of A or the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B. Okay, let's have a go at applying this formula. Here's an example. We are given that A is equal to the following and B is the following. Find A dot B, find the angle between A and B, given your answer to one decimal place. Now, firstly, I would like to write these as column vectors. I think it's much easier. Uh, vector A is therefore 8i, negative 5j, and negative 4k. And vector B is 5i, 4j, and negative 1k. Easier to write them as column vectors. So for part A, if we're working at A dot B, A dot B, well, what we're dotting, we're dotting these vectors A, negative 5, negative 4. Show the examiner what you're doing, and you're dotting it. Don't forget your dot sign. You're dotting it with 5, 4, and negative 1. Right underneath, so this would be equal to 8 times 5. Do show your working. Do not just write this as an answer. Plus negative 5 times 4, 
plus negative 4 times negative 1. And this is going to be 40. And this will be subtract 20. And this would be plus 4. And so we're going to get for that 24. So a dot b is equal to 24 in this case. Okay, now for part B, we want to work out the angle between A and B. Let me do this maybe in a different colored pen, and I'll do this down this side of the page. You should probably go down, but just to keep everything within view. Part B, you want the angle. Now, remember our formula that cos of the angle is equal to A dot B all over the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B. Now, whenever applying this formula, it's always good practice to work out each component. Now, from part A, we know A dot B is 24, so we can write that down. A dot B is equal to 24. Let's work out mod A and mod B separately, and then plug it into the formula. The modulus of A is going to be equal to 8 squared plus negative 5 squared plus negative 4 squared. Remember your brackets there, square rooted. If you type that into a calculator, you get the square root of 105. Leave it as a square root, don't round yet. Do rounding at the very end. The modulus of b, well that's going to be the square root of five squared plus four squared plus negative one, don't forget your bracket squared. And when you do that, you get yourself the square root of 42. Again, don't round, here's all your method marks. So what we would do then is we would say that cos theta is therefore equal to 24 divided by the square root of 105 multiplied by the square root of 42. Type that all in your calculator and then inverse cos that answer before you do any rounding and you would get that theta must be equal to 68.8 degrees to one decimal place. Okay, so make sure you only round at the very end. So if you work this out, you get cos theta and then apply the inverse cos or arc cos to both sides and you get what your angle is. Okay, let's have a go at another example, example two. Given that A is this and B is this, find the angle between A and B, given your answer to 1 dp. So here, <clears throat> exactly the same question as before, apart from no part A. In an exam, write down the formula you're going to use. You're going to use the formula that cos theta is equal to A dot B all over the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B. And now lay out your working for each of these. Now, I would like to write what A is in the column vector. A is negative 1, 1, 3. And B is equal to 7, negative 2, 2. Right? So let's work at each part. A dot B, A dot B. Well, that's going to be negative 1, 1, 3, dotted with 7, negative 2, 2. And we're going to get negative 1 times 7, plus 1 times negative 2, plus 3 times 2. It's very important to show your workings here, not just write answers. If you write an answer and get it wrong, you lose all method marks. This is negative 7, uh, subtract 2, plus 6, and we would get for this negative 3. Okay, so a dot b is negative 3. Going down, now we would work out the modulus of a. Well, the modulus of a is going to be the square root, negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. If we do that, we get the square root of 11. The modulus of b, well, that's going to be the square root of 7 squared plus negative 2 all squared plus 2 squared. Don't forget your brackets. When you do that, you get the square root of 57. Okay? And we found all our components. You should keep going down the page, but for just for ease to see here, we would then write that cos theta is therefore a dot b, which is negative 3, divided by root 11, root, root 11 times root 57. Tap that in your calculator and apply the inverse cos. Just think about this before the answer comes out. Cos is a negative here. This is going to be a negative answer. And when you think of your cos graph, cos is negative after 90. Okay, So it's, it's definitely going to be an angle over 90. 
And when you work out theta, you actually get yourself 96.9 degrees to 1 dp, and it kind of makes sense based on that. Okay? So we have been able to find the angle between two lines using uh, the dot product and also using the modulus of these vectors. Having done that for a moment, I just want to go back to the definition of the angle between two vectors. Here's what we originally talked about, and we said if we had two vectors a and b and this was the angle between them, we could work out that angle by using cos theta is the vector a dotted with the vector b all divided by the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b. So here's our picture. Now theta is any angle. Suppose I made it so that I adjusted a, let's say, so that a and b were at right angles to each other. Suppose I made it so that a and b were exactly at right angles to each other. Okay, what would theta be? If I made this true, theta would be 90. So suppose a and b were uh, perpendicular, they were at 90, that would mean that theta is equal to 90, and let's apply this in this formula, cos of 90 is 0, okay, so we would have that a dot b over the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b is 0, we could forget about the bottom or times both sides by that, it would tell us that a dot b is equal to 0. Okay, so what we can say is if A and B are perpendicular, let's suppose A and B are perpendicular, if A and B are perpendicular, A dot B must equal zero. Okay, so if we know that they're perpendicular, they must be zero. Going backwards, suppose A dot B, we had the answer to A dot B and it was zero, we must be able to deduce that a and b are perpendicular. Because if a dot b was zero, if a dot b was equal to zero, if this was zero, we would have cos theta equals zero, and theta would therefore be 90. And so they'd be perpendicular. Okay, so we have this uh, fact here, that if a dot b is zero, if we know that, then a, b, a and b are perpendicular, or if we are told a and b are perpendicular, then we know a dot b equals zero. With parallel, it's just a tiny bit more complicated. But suppose we knew that a... Um, suppose we knew, for example, that... <clears throat> that a and b were parallel. If a and b were parallel, what that would mean is that theta would be equal to zero. There would be no angle between it if they were parallel. So this would be like that, there'd be no angle between them. Okay, so if they were equal to zero, zero, that would mean that cos theta would be one, and we would have that a dot b must be the modulus of a. Uh, a dot b over modulus of a modulus of b is one, so a dot b would be the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b. So if they are parallel, you know that's true. But this is the main result here we really need to be aware of. Um, if a and b are uh, perpendicular, then a dot b is zero. If we know a dot b is zero, then we can deduce a and b are perpendicular. Okay, so let's have a go at, at a question that uses that. We're given two vectors, and we're told they're perpendicular, and we're asked to find the value of lambda. So, first thing, let's convert them to column vectors. It's in eta. A would be 2, negative 6, and 1. And b is going to be equal to to 5, 2, and lambda. Okay? Because they're perpendicular, tell the examiner what you're doing. Perpendicular, and that implies or means that a dot b must be 0. When you dot these vectors, it must be 0. So therefore, 2, negative 6, 1, dotted with 5, 2, lambda, must be 0. So let's times that out. 2 times 5, plus negative 6 times 2, plus 1 times lambda, must be 0. Tidying up, we've got 10, subtract 12, plus lambda, equals 0. So we'd have negative 2 plus lambda is equal to 0. So it turns out that lambda must therefore be equal to 2. 
and we're done in that regard. Okay, last example with this and then we're done. We're given two vectors and we're asked to find a vector which is perpendicular to both A and B. So we've got to find a, a, a vector that's perpendicular to A and B. Okay, so let's let this vector, let the vector to be found be, let's say, x, y, z. Okay, so we want, um, let, and let's call this vector, let's call this vector something like p. We want a dot p to be 0, and we want b dot p to be equal to 0. Uh, a dot p little in joke there for my class okay so um, let's do negative 2 5 negative 4 dotted with x y z when we do that we get uh, negative 2x plus 5y subtract 4z and you know this must be equal to zero, so it must be zero, zero, zero. That must be equal to, sorry, would be equal to zero, not zero, 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 my fault there. You know that these two vectors are perpendicular, so it will be zero, so that's equal to zero. And you could do the same thing with b dot p, and you would get yourself, b dot p would be four, negative eight, five, dotted with this x, y, z, and you would get zero, so you would get 4x subtract 8y plus 5z is equal to 0. Okay, so we're trying to find the solution, uh, a vector for x, uh, a numbers for x, y, and z that make both these equations work. Now we haven't solved, um, we've got two equations here and three unknowns. What we can do in that scenario, and these work for <coughs> all, of, all of these in this book really, we can assume that one of the, we can let, let, let's say, z be a number. We can try and work out what would happen if, let's say, z was equal to 1. We could assume z is 1, and then we could work at x and y. If we can find an x and y, then that x, y, and the z being 1 is one of the solutions. There could be loads of others. But all we have to do is find a vector, not all the vectors. So if you let z be 1, you get negative 2x plus 5y uh, subtract 4 equals 0. And if you let z be 1 here, you get 4x subtract 8y plus 5 equals 0. And then we can solve these simultaneously. Okay, We can uh, use our calculator or use various methods of solving simultaneous equations here. But we would get at the end that x is equal to 7 over 4. We would get y is equal to 3 over 2. And remember, we had chosen z to be 1. So the vector there we're looking for that's perpendicular to them both would be 7 over 4, 3 over 2, and 1. That would be an example of a perpendicular vector, this vector p. Okay? Right, so that's it for this particular video. Do make sure you read chapter 5, 69 to 70, then complete exercise 5G, uh, questions 1 to 8, and 10 to 13. Thanks for watching.